been raining today, but uh, that hasn't put me off going on a sightseeing tour of Belfast. It includes the nationalist and unionist sides of the divisions which still exist here, but it also, the sightseeing tour at least, includes the parliament buildings which I've seen on the news but haven't seen in real life, but I have depicted here. Hope you enjoy it. For him Northern Ireland would not exist, but it's not what he wanted. He wanted all of Ireland to remain inside the parameters of the United Kingdom. When he realised that was no longer an option, he felt that he'd failed personally. And he, so, he chose to opt out of not just Irish politics, but out of Ireland itself. But our stop number six is an automatic stop. All of our buses stop on the far side of the statue. So if you're visiting the buildings, and I recommend that you do because they are quite spectacular on the inside, the entrance to the buildings is on the right hand side as you look at them from here. You'll have to go through uh, another security checkpoint, it's only 30 seconds. They run tours of the buildings on the R. So if you, you can also join the tour, you don't have to wait until the next one starts. All of our buses stop in ex exactly the same place here. They come along every 30 minutes. Now the last bus will leave this estate at 3.25. They close the gates to buses at 3.30. So for anyone wanting to visit the buildings, this is your stop. And this is stop number 12. It's the nearest stop to the Ulster Museum and to the Botanic Gardens, which are about 100 metres straight ahead. Murals in this area, you view them as historical. You have to, if you want to be the introduction of national schools, where all subjects were taught in English, would also have a dramatic impact. By the start of the 20th century, the Irish language was in free fall decline. But in this area, it's certainly on the increase. There are 16 Irish language schools, and you'll see the Irish language being used in street signs and shop fronts. Coming up on the left are three murals that you'll have no difficulty seeing as historical. The date is 1916, the event, the Easter Rising in Dublin. But look carefully at the murals. Their characters are dressed in paramilitary regalia. They're carrying weapons, which you would be pretty sure they don't have licenses for. In Dublin, the event around the GPO depicted there, the centenary next year. So 1916 dominates this area of the falls. 1981 dominates the next area. Coming up is stop number 15, the Bobby Sands mural. If you look over your left shoulder, uh, the gable wall of the Sinn Féin Advice Centre, you'll see one of the most photographed murals in the world. The mural of Bobby Sands. The mural makes him the most well known of the hunger strikers who died, but he would have been anyway. Not only was he the first to die on the 5th of May 1981, he was also elected a Westminster MP. And I do emphasise the word elected. He was never to become one. The idea was to put pressure on the then British Prime Minister, Margaret Thatcher. Over your left shoulder now, and this is stop 15. Ten charity communities. Then barricades went up, and the paramilitaries could move in to a new recruiting ground. That thing on the left is one of the 17 existing peace walls. It started life as a series of burnt-out double-decker buses dividing Catholic from Protestant parts of streets. The security forces moved in, removed the burnt-out buses and replaced them with temporary barriers that could bigger and higher and are now a permanent reminder of the hatred and division of the past. Now it's the longest outdoor art gallery in Europe. On it, the results of graffiti competitions, murals being painted by both sides, and no matter how I try to gloss over it, the fact that it's still there is what horrifies most people when they come to Belfast for the first time. Here a wall bigger than the Berlin Wall, being there longer than the Berlin Wall, still dividing peoples of Western Europe. 
it's signed by thousands of people messages of hope written beside them some of them very emotive some of them quite funny the words of the more famous have been embedded in a section of the wall just up ahead where these people have gathered at the top in the middle you'll see the words of the Dalai Lama open your arms to change but don't let go of your values and then bottom right you see the words of Bill Clinton I did not have sanction. No, sorry. Strength and wisdom <laughs> are not opposing values. I can never resist that, but Bill Clinton was a true friend to Ireland. And Senator Mitchell, who brokered the Good Friday Agreement, an extra good friend. Very hard to get admiration from both sides. Very few people managed it. On the right, a very graphic mural showing the aftermath of some of the bomb attacks. 90% of all the bomb attacks that took place during the Troubles took place in Belfast. So simple mathematics and a little bit of logic would have told you you were safe or anywhere but. And that 90% equated to 45,000 bomb attacks. In the towns and villages across Northern Ireland, things were very different. It wasn't the same paramilitarism, it wasn't the same sectarianism. The two traditions, they intermingled, they intermixed, they intervaried. Mixed marriages weren't unusual. Now people are returning to live in Belfast. The more affluent areas of Belfast are now areas where the two traditions live together harmoniously. Religion is no longer seen as a barrier to friendship as far as most people are concerned. And to young people, the troubles are ancient history. But to people that lost loved ones during the Troubles, the Good Friday Agreement was to be a turning point. They were being asked to vote for peace, but in doing so, they would also be voting for the release of their loved one's killer. It didn't matter whether they were nationalist or unionist. By voting for peace, all political prisoners were being released. So the instigators of their grief would then be free. It was a big ask. 94% in the Republic of Ireland voted for the Good Friday Agreement, 70% in Northern Ireland. And since it's been implemented, things have changed here beyond anyone's wildest dreams for the better. I've now come to the dome, which is atop the Victoria Square shopping centre to finish it. Yeah. I'll let you have a panoramic view, I think. Not bad, eh? To finish day two, anyway.